Hi everyone and welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel today. This video is all about the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, the 2011 in S-Class. So this is currently the open series car. I'm hoping it still is for quite some time, maybe a couple of days or so. So it gives you time to use and abuse this build. This is the build that I've been using, 6.2 speed, 5.2 handling, 6.6 acceleration and 5.4 braking. And there are the stats and figures for those interested. So let's hop in. So before I get into the parts and the tuning, for those of you wondering who did this paint, it's Westy65007 and the file name is Corsair. So now let's get into what makes this car bearable in the Open Series events. So performance, let's start with that. The exhaust is on race because it does give you power as well as a weight reduction. And the intake manifold and throttle body these two are on race engine i've got a sport displacement just to take it from a 6.2 liter to a 6.3 the anti-roll bars on platform and handling are both race so that's front and rear and the springs and dampers they're also on race and so is the weight reduction Tires, I've gone for the max tire, so it's a bit more of a uh, more of a grip build, this really, in fairness, but it is solid all around. Max front tire width, max rear tire width, and the race tire compound. The wheels, I've gone for the lightest ones of the Speedline F1s. With this paint job, I think it just gives that white wall that you get, I think it looks kind of slick. So that's the reason why I opted for these ones, but as long as you pick the lightest rims, it doesn't matter. Drivetrain transmission, that's on race, and so is the race differential. And I can only opt in for a sport driveline. Aeros and appearance. As per usual, it's the rear wing is on race, the front bumper is on race. And on this one, I was kind of experimenting with this, so I just stuck the rear bumper on race also. Um, feel free to take this off and put something else on if you can. But this worked for me, and I liked it and enjoyed it, so... And the conversions, they are completely stock. So, what makes this car do what it does? We're going to start with the tyres. The tyre pressure is at 31.5 on the front and 32.0 on the rear. The reason for it, I just want a bit more grip from the front end. So, that's the reason for the smaller tyre pressure on the front. Gearing, this is the ratio that I've set for. 3.20, 321, 208, etc, etc. So that's what I've gone for. You won't really get into 7th gear. It's just a 6th gear car. But if you did have this gear ratio set so you could use 7th, it just didn't work very well. It was too eager to accelerate, so it was very, very unstable. Alignment, negative 1.6 front and negative 1.2 on the rear. Front toe, I've gone for 0 0.1. Very strange for me, I know. Usually I do try to keep these... 0 and 0, but 0 0.1 on the front did assist me mid-corner, so that's what I've gone for. Rear toe is on 0 0.0, and the caster is 7.0. Anti-roll bars, not the stiffest. I've gone for 22.05 and 25.02. If you want her to be a bit more agile, maybe bang this up by 5, so 27, and then this one to 30. It'll make it a bit more lively. But this is what I settled with because it was... It gave me a nice stable corner entry, mid corner and corner exit. And that's for me, that's what my builds are all about. Springs 832.5 on the front and 870.2 on the rear. That also is part of the reason why the roll bars are a bit softer. But this seemed to work for me. I didn't feel like there was too much movement in the car, but it still remained quite grippy. Ride height is slammed at 3.7 and 4.1. Bump stiffness, this probably could be lowered, maybe by a couple of clicks, front and rear, but this is what I settled for. I thought it made the car quite stable, quite easy to use, and um, time and time again, I was literally within tenths of my lap, so it, the consistency was also there. 3.7 on the front and 4.0 on the rear. Rebound stiffness, I've gone for 11.0 on the front and 11.7 on the rear. Roll center height, I've not actually touched the front. I've left that stock, but the rear I've put at 0 0.4. I just felt sometimes coming out of corners, there was a tiny bit of wobble, but this has negated that. And it's also helping mid-corner to get rid of that understeer. 
anti-dive i've gone for 7.2 on the front and negative 10.0 on the rear if you feel like there's a bit too much on the steer whilst on the brakes and trail braking just knock this down either put it at zero or minus five or something like that but this worked for me 7.2 or there or thereabouts i felt this gave me the most consistent results downforce maxed out front and rear again feel free if you are on the faster tracks and you feel like she is on the steering just knock this down to about 150 on the rear and it should completely negate it if not just carry on going go to maybe 125 100 just keep going until you are happy but this is the uh, happy medium that i settled with i didn't feel there was too much understeer the braking balance is on 50 percent, and the braking force pressure is at 150 this is probably personal preference but this is what i used anyway and it worked for me as always and last but not least the differential acceleration is on 100 and deceleration is on 10 percent. feel free if you do feel that when you go onto curbs she does like to spin up knock this down to maybe about 65 55 and it should hopefully give that tire that's on the tarmac a bit more stability and a bit more extra grip rather than slipping with the one that's on the curb so that's the build let's hop into some races now see how she works and hopefully you guys can uh, start to enjoy this car just as much as i have right and we are off catalonia in the morning i believe and we get an absolute missile of a star got caught behind eighth place here pulled into the inside hopefully we can get around this corner unscathed nearly ended up in the tires there from my man but i was quite fortunate to get out unscathed and there's been no contact i speak too soon <laughs> nice dive up the inside there big dive bomb there on fifth place and collision no penalty there another collision there off track and handed with an absolutely outrageous penalty of a second but you know it is what it is we all know that the year penalty system is not the best tucked in the slipstream of fourth yeah fourth place dived up the inside kept it nice and tight parked the bus and we are away in third place we're on the podium now flick it left again don't get on the power too early the curves on the right are a bit brutal and again like i say it does upset the car we're right on second place here oh <laughs> just decided he doesn't want to well, he just decided he didn't want to be in part of this race anymore. Fair enough. I nearly made the... Ah, well, I nearly made the same mistake there. So now is just going to be a chasing game. Playing cat and mouse, and I'm after him. You know, I've set my sights on him. Let's see what we can do. Hopefully, I can get a nice overtake. I did run it a tiny bit wide here, and again... But absolutely shafted by the penalty system but you know again it's off track limit to limits you know just got to go on with it it's tucked in his slipstream there i was looking to try and get up the inside but he just went a bit too deep trying to make sure he could outbreak me into turn one again kept it nice parked the bus on the inside and uh, yeah i'm away again smashed that corner there used the curb on the outside and it did upset the car into these two fast right handers and yeah, it's uh, it's been a it's been a fun car to tune actually. It's quite difficult, and I, you know you do see pretty much the same builds, but they are slightly different. And I think personally that this is one of the better builds. So um, yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe if you are brand spanking new. And as always, take care of yourselves. Stay tuned for more.